Estamos ao vivo? Funcionou? Será que eu tô online? <risos> Acho que sim. Você está online. Aí. Só peço desculpas pelo pequeno atraso. Não sei o que estava acontecendo. Acho que o servidor do, do YouTube está com problema, sobrecarregado. Não sei, não estava conseguindo conectar. Mas aí eu estou utilizando o servidor de backup. Acho que agora vai funcionar. Vocês conseguem me ouvir? Me veem tudo direitinho, tudo certinho. Boa tarde a todo mundo. Como vocês estão? How have you been? Is everybody good? How are you? How are you feeling? Enquanto o pessoal vai chegando e se ambientando aí, conversando comigo no chat, falando comigo se vocês conseguem me ouvir, se está tudo certo. É, gostaria de saber como que foi fazer a tarefa. Então, a gente fez, começou a escrever, de fato, o nosso texto né, nessa semana. Então, a gente escreveu a, a sessão de introdução, utilizando os building blocks que a gente estava discutindo e as é, estruturas linguísticas propriamente, né, linguístico-discursivas propriamente, é, para fazer isso, para desempenhar essas, essas funções. Então, como que foi essa experiência? Foi fácil? Foi difícil? Tiveram é, dificuldade? Funcionou? Não funcionou? Como foi? Contem para mim, mim aí, por favor. Boa tarde, todo mundo. Boa tarde, Ana, Thaís, Rafaela, Santino, Érica, Samanta, Jefferson, Fabiano, Kátia, Rafaela, Ana, Nicolas, Kátia, Renan. Boa tarde a todos. Como foi fazer a tarefa? Hoje a gente vai é, começar a discutir sobre a sessão de Literature Review. E a gente vai fazer o mesmo caminho, tá? É, eu pensei da gente organizar sempre essa, essa mesma esse mesmo modus operandi, de pensar primeiramente a organização textual e a função comunicativa, né? pensar mesmo por que, que a gente tem que escrever aquilo, qual é a função daquilo para o nosso texto, como que isso contribui para a divulgação do nosso trabalho, como que isso pode vir a nos ajudar a comunicar aquelas informações, aqueles conhecimentos que a gente quer comunicar. E aí, depois disso, a gente... É, mergulhar de fato na língua né? e nas estruturas linguísticas os tempos verbais, as expressões e aí o phrase bank vai ser um aliado muito importante nesse, nesse processo então a gente começou a fazer isso, fazer isso com a introdução e a gente vai começar agora a fazer isso com a sessão de, de literatura, né? revisão de literatura deixa eu ver o que vocês estão falando é, foi muito bom, ajudou bastante que bom, Érica, que bom Achei difícil, não sei se gostei de, muito de como ficou. É, Nicolas, lembra que a gente pensa, né? A gente estava pensando o nosso texto como processo, a escrita como processo e não como produto, tá? É, este foi o primeiro passo, né? A gente começou a escrever o texto agora. Então, ainda tem muito é, a ser trabalhado, né? Pensa nesse, é, nesse texto como bruto, né? Então, essa é a primeira versão, é a primeira matéria-prima que eu tenho para poder trabalhar. E aí, feito é melhor que perfeito, né? Então, ter alguma coisa, ter algum texto é melhor do que não ter nada, aí a gente pode ir aprimorando, a gente pode ir pulindo esse texto conforme a gente vai avançando e progredindo no curso, tá? Nada é escrito em pedra. A gente pode voltar, não tô contente, não tô satisfeito, volto no texto, faço as modificações, uso as informações que, que a gente desenvolveu para as outras sessões nessa é, sessão de introdução também. Vocês vão ver que Muitas coisas se repetem, né? as coisas não são mutuamente exclusivas. Não é só aquilo que eu uso na introdução que eu não posso usar nas, nas outras sessões do meu texto. Né? Então é tudo um processo, tá? Vamos com calma. <risos> Mesma coisa para a Ana. É, Rafaela, professor, fiquei com uma dúvida em relação à construção da introdução. Eu fiz segundo as revistas que escolhi, referenciando e tudo mais, mas não sei se era para ter feito desse jeito. Rafaela, não sei se você chegou a ver, é, você me mandou um e-mail, né? eu respondi você. A gente, é, é isso mesmo, a gente está pensando sempre em fazer com base nas normas da revista, tá? É, a ideia é que a gente não jogue água para fora da bacia, então que a gente possa aproveitar esse texto depois para uma vindoura publicação, né? Então, que esse texto possa ser aproveitado para que vocês o publiquem em, uma, em um periódico internacional, em língua inglesa, tá? E para isso, para que isso aconteça, a gente sempre vai ter como norte... É, 
o contexto, tá? Então, o que a revista pede para a gente é o que vai guiar a nossa produção. E aí, pensando nas, é, nas referências e tudo, é, eu diria que não é uma preocupação agora, tá? Então, a gente não, eu não estou preocupado em olhar para as referências, normas, citação, paráfrase, né? Nesse momento, porque a gente vai ter um momento do curso dedicado só a isso, tá? E aí a gente vai poder revisitar o texto e fazer os ajustes necessários. O que eu estou preocupado agora é que as funções comunicativas sejam desempenhadas, tá? Então, que haja uma conclusão, uma, desculpa, que haja uma contextualização, que haja um knowledge gap, que haja um thesis statement, tá? Que essas funções comunicativas sejam sendo desempenhadas no texto de vocês. Essa é a minha é, maior preocupação nesse momento. E aí os detalhezinhos como é, referências, por exemplo, né, citação, não citação, ou as normas, é, APA, enfim, a gente pode ir ajustando aos pouquinhos depois, tá? Então sempre pensando como processo mais do que produto. Então pensem que isso que vocês me entregaram... Ah, eu tenho que verificar meu e-mail então, Rafaela. Vou ver se, se não chegou, se deu problema na entrega. É, mas pensem que o que vocês estão me entregando é parte de um processo, tá? Então nunca é um, é um produto, não é algo que vocês me entregaram, não pode mais mexer, é aquilo que vai valer para o resto do semestre. Não, calma, a gente pode, vai revisitar e trabalhar nesse texto várias e várias vezes ainda, tá? Então, o que eu me preocupo muito, e eu quero que vocês é, estejam sempre atentos, é participar do processo, Tá? Então, que a gente esteja sempre, continuamente, trabalhando nesse texto, porque quanto mais a gente consegue participar do processo, é, mais a gente progride, ok? Legal, pessoal. Falei bastante, né? <risos> Nesse primeiro momento. Então, hoje a gente vai fazer o quê? A gente vai começar a falar da revisão de literatura, tá? E essa revisão de literatura é uma sessão que é cheia de dependes, né? Então, muitas das coisas que eu vou apresentar aqui hoje mais do que na introdução, é, são menos regras e mais possibilidades, tá? Tudo que a gente pode fazer nessa sessão, que às vezes nem é uma sessão, às vezes é uma sessão que está junto da introdução, né? dependendo da revista. É, às vezes é um trabalho todo, né? então tem trabalhos todos que são revisão de literatura. É, e tudo depende. Então, o que, que, eu, o que eu queria mostrar para vocês hoje são as possibilidades, o que, que a gente pode fazer com essa, com essa sessão, com essa ideia de revisar a literatura, tá? Isso que a gente vai discutir hoje. Então, para começar, é, eu postei lá no nosso Google Classroom um link. Deixa eu abrir para vocês. De uma plataforma. Ó, esse aqui, chama Paul Ev, que nem a gente fez com a introdução. Tá? Eu vou pedir para vocês acessarem o nosso Google Classroom, entrarem lá no link, tá? e aí vocês vão ser apresentados a uma pergunta. Essa aqui. Deixa eu esconder minha câmera que está na frente. Aí ah, eu acho que eu tenho que ativar antes. Não, está ativado. É... So, what word comes to your mind when you think about literature review? Ok? Então, quando vocês ouvem literature review, o que é que vocês pensam? Qual é a primeira palavra que vocês pensam? Vou pedir para vocês entrarem lá no Google Classroom e responderem a pergunta. Ok? Vou dar um tempinho para vocês fazerem isso. Background, legal. Contextualization, uhum. contextualization que estava lá na introdução também, né? Olha só como as coisas já estão se sobrepondo. Knowledge, contexto, uhum. legal. O que mais, pessoal? Informações, sim. <risos> o que é um review? Para que, que serve um review? E que tipo de informações são essas? A literature review tem uma, uma coisa muito importante, né? A gente tem uma coisa que, que é o centro dela, né? A gente tem que incluir 
o quê? Conhecimento, sim, informação, conhecimento. Mas que conhecimento? Qualquer conhecimento? Que conhecimento é esse? Que tipo de informações são essas que a gente mobiliza na nossa literature review? Overview, hum. Gap, ok. Gap, que também, assim como contextualização, estava lá na introdução também, né? Então, será que é a mesma coisa, literature review, em introdução? Specific. Previous findings, very good. That's very important, right? So, we're always referring to previous research, ok? Então, a gente está sempre aí referenciando, né? A gente está sempre dizendo, discutindo é, as pesquisas que já existem, né? As pesquisas que vieram antes de nós, né? Então, esses conhecimentos que a gente mobiliza aí na revisão de literatura, essa literatura né, é justamente isso. É, são os conhecimentos, conhecimento científico, as pesquisas, né, que assim como as nossas, foram desenvolvidas para compartilhar conhecimento. Bibliographic, very good, very important. Topic specific, information gap, overview, contextualization, uh -huh, very good. Very interesting. Acho que dá para a gente voltar. Temos bastante palavras interessantes. Ok, legal. Então, dá para ter uma ideia do que a gente está entendendo por revisão de literatura. E aí, as coisas como... As, the lines started to blur, right? Because introduction and literature review, they share some features, right? So, we're talking about... When you're talking about introduction, we talked about uh, contextualization, knowledge gap... Right? All of those things. Uh, and when we talk about literature review, we're also talking about knowledge gap and contextualization. Yes? No? Okay, so we're going to discuss this today. Last class, I showed you the metaphor. Tá, peraí, a gente já volta, eu quero mostrar a metáfora. So last class, I showed you the metaphor of a parachute, right, for the introduction. So the introduction is the transition to your reader, right? Uh, it's a transition between the state of mind, the psychic state your reader was before the reading activity, right, to the state of mind, the psychic state. Uh, organization, right? The psychic state that you want your reader to be in in order to comprehend, to understand your text, okay? So if the introduction is the parachute, right? The literature review would be the setting itself, okay? So most of the times when you have both an introduction and a literature review in a text, when, okay? When we have both. Uh, the introduction is the indication, okay? So it's the starting point uh, of information, of the knowledge gap, of the contextualization, while the literature reveal is an in-depth exploration, okay? So if the introduction is a parachute that offer you, the reader, time uh, and conditions to understand what he's going to find in your text, right? So if you jump from a plane, for example, right? You get, you get to see what you're going to find once you reach the ground, okay? The literature review is the ground itself, okay? The field to be explored. So we indicate in the introduction, that's a possibility when we have both, okay? But again, when it comes to uh, literature review, there, there's a lot of, it depends, right? <laughs> So when we have both introductions and literature reviews, the introduction is the indication and the literature review is the in-depth exploration, okay? So the introduction is the parachute and the literature review is the setting, the territory itself, like a uh, forest in this example. Very good. But why do we need a literature review? What is the purpose of writing a literature review? Why should we consider research that came before us? Why it's important? What do, you, what do you think? What do you say? What happens when we don't have a literature review? What is the consequence for the text, for the result, and for the reading process? Can I communicate the knowledge that I've developed without 
a literature review, without referring to previous sources, to previous research. What do you say? Contextualização, ok. But why? Why should we have a contextualization? So focus here is on the why, right? What is the reason? É importante ter uma contextualização, sim. É, é importante ter... Eu não tô, não tô dizendo que não é importante, tá? Pelo amor de Deus. Mas que, que, gostaria de pensar, gostaria de propor essa reflexão. Por quê? Por que, que é importante? O que vocês acham? O que aconteceria se eu escrevesse um texto, então, fiz minha pesquisa, anos e anos de dedicação, gerando no novos conhecimentos, né? descobrindo novas coisas, é... e aí eu quero comunicar o que eu encontrei, quero comunicar esse conhecimento. E aí eu escrevo um texto para comunicar isso, e nesse texto eu não incluo uma revisão de literatura, eu não referencio outros textos. Quais são as implicações disso para o texto? O que será que pode acontecer se eu fizer isso? É necessário saber até que ponto já se sabe do assunto e a partir de então quais novos conhecimentos podem ser acrescidos. Very good. That's very important, Santino. So, you're starting from a point, right? When you're doing research, uh, most of the times, I, I would dare to say always, uh, we're not starting from scratch. We're not start, starting from point zero, right? So, we are starting from somewhere, okay? So, the first thing we do when we uh, start a research inquiry, scientific inquiry, right, is look for sources, is to read a bunch of st stuff, to know what is already known, and then to know where can I start from, okay? So this is an indication uh, of where I'm starting from, okay? So it's an indication of people that came before me. I'm not creating everything. The knowledge that I'm creating is related, is a dialogue established uh, between the knowledge that is already Uh, establishing the field, the knowledge that already exists, ok? Conhecer o que já se sabe sobre o tema escrito, very good. Thaís, reunir o maior número de informações sobre determinado assunto que vai auxiliar na escrita do trabalho, perfeito. Eu tinha uma professora que dizia que a gente não, é, não deve tentar inventar a roda na, na, nas pesquisas, né? Então, a gente não está criando coisas que já existem, né? A gente está expandindo, partindo e dialogando com conhecimentos científicos que já estão estabelecidos na comunidade, ok? Então, uma das, um dos passos para fazer esse diálogo, estabelecer esse diálogo, é indicar o que já se sabe, né? Até para referenciar a comunidade. Então, é, a ciência é a community enterprise, né? It's a social enterprise. A gente faz ciência a partir da comunidade científica, na comunidade científica. Por isso que, por exemplo, a revisão por pares é um um procedimento tão importante e parte mesmo do processo de divulgação científica, né? Porque o conhecimento, ele ganha notoriedade, ganha validade também a partir é, da aceitação pela comunidade, né? Nicholas, it is important because previous finds helps us to understand our data. Very good. Also, we could take the results as new. When it's not true, we may discover the will. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so, so it's a, a way of stating, right, where, uh, where we're starting, okay? Stating where we're starting. So what is the starting point? What is already now? We have a definition here of a literature review, okay? I'm going to read the definition and you tell me if you agree, if you disagree, what are your thoughts? This is a definition from the Ashford University website, okay? They have the center of uh, academic writing and reading and they, they offer a lot of courses on on this topic, okay? So the definition goes, a literature review is a survey of scholarly sources that provides an overview of a particular, top, particular topic, okay? So one of you said overview in the previous activity, well done. It generally follows a discussion of the paper, paper's thesis statement or the study's goal, goals or purpose, okay? Do you remember that when you're talking about introduction, I told you that the thesis statement is the pumping heart 
of your texts, okay? So when you are reviewing literature, you are also including a revision of the thesis statements of the purpose of those research, okay? Because it's the core, it's the center, it's the most important thing of a research, their purpose, their objective, okay? Everything they do, everything they develop is aimed towards reaching, achieving one objective, okay? So when you are referring to sources, it's also important to refer that, okay? Uh, literature reviews are a collection of the most relevant and significant publications regarding that topic in order to provide a comprehensive look at what has been said on the topic and by whom. Okay, that's very important. What has been said and who said it, right? Because uh, context not only matters, but also means. Remember that. It may also identify questions a body of research does not answer and make a case for why further study or research question Questions is important to a field, okay? So justification as well. So why am I researching what I'm researching? Where I'm coming from? What is the starting point? What is already known? And what is the gap that I aim at fulfilling, okay? There is this differentiate, differentiation between literature review and annotated bibliography, okay? Two different things, okay? Let's see what is the difference. So in the second paragraph, we read... People frequently believe that the concept of literature review and annotated bibliography are interchangeable. However, an annotated bibliography is a list of your references with a summary of the contents and the publication's relationship to your research, to your research question. A literature review is an overview of the topic, an explanation of how publications differ from one another, and an examination of how each publication contributes to the discussion and understanding of the topic. Okay? So, those are two different things, but those are very important things, and they have different purposes. Okay? So, annotated by bibliography, right? It's an exercise of pre-writing. Okay? It's an exercise of textual organization. When you are reading your sources, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about database search today and search mechanisms. But when you are reading your sources, the research papers, the articles you've selected to read that you think are relevant to your research, okay, it's important to keep track of what you're reading. Uh, a way of keep tracking is creating an annotated bibliography, okay? So when you are just uh, reporting what is already uh, put there, what is already displayed, okay? Uh, a literature review, on the other hand, is a conversation, is a dialogue, okay? So you are comparing, you are deferring uh, different papers, okay? So a literature review is a dialogue, an annotated bibliography is a list, right? It's a way of keeping track of what you read. Very good, guys. What do you think of this definition? Do you agree? Do you have any thoughts? What is your take on that? Is this the way you usually comprehend uh, literature review? Is this the way you usually write your literature review? Do you usually write annotated bibliography? Em português, eu costumo dizer para os meus alunos que quando a gente está tá fazendo pesquisa acadêmica e a gente está nesse processo da leitura dos textos, né, esse processo mais, esse momento mais inicial, é, é muito importante fazer o firerê. O que, que é o firerê? Fichar, resumir, resenhar. <risos> firerê. <risos> né? Para não perder tempo. Né? Então, fichar o texto é fazer a bibliografia anotada. Tá? Annotated bibliography. Fichar o texto significa... É, toda vez que eu for ler um texto que é relacionado à minha pesquisa, abrir um documento no Word, copiar a referência, que vai me ajudar muito, vai salvar a minha vida na hora que eu estiver fazendo a sessão de referências do texto, né? Não deixar para fazer tudo em, na última hora. É, enfim, você pode deixar, mas vai dar mais trabalho, né? Choices. É, e aí, e elencando as informações que estão presentes no texto. Né? Então, eu vou lendo e aí eu posso fazer isso por citações diretas, com uso de aspas, né? ou por paráfrase, né? quando eu reporto com as minhas palavras o que está sendo dito. Mas nesse momento da, do fichamento, que é o fi do firerê, é, eu não estou me colocando no texto, eu não estou dizendo o que eu acho, eu não estou fazendo uma avaliação do texto, estou fazendo uma avaliação do mérito da, das metodologias, da importância do, daquele texto ou do papel central, ou de talvez das falhas, das lacunas, né? 
É, nesse momento do, do fichamento, eu estou elencando o que o texto traz, as informações que eu acho que são úteis para o texto. Por quê? É, quando eu estiver escrevendo propriamente a minha revisão de literatura, né, caso eu esqueça o que eu li, porque a gente lê muitas coisas, né, e aí não tem HD o suficiente dentro da cabeça para guardar todas as informações, eu posso, ao invés de ler o texto de novo, me referenciar ao meu fichamento. Né? Então, isso vai me poupar tempo e esforço. Okay? E aí, lembrar sempre de quando a gente estiver fazendo o fichamento por citação, com aspas, e aí sempre indica aspas, para eu não esquecer que aquelas palavras não são minhas, são palavras dos autores, sempre indicar a página também para ajudar a fazer a minha referência e é, eu não perder tempo, ok? E aí o resumo, o que é o resumo? O urê do, do firerê, o primeiro urê, né? O resumo é uma ideia geral do texto. Né? Então, eu faço um parágrafo, escrevo um parágrafo, e aí eu também não estou me colocando, mas eu estou resumindo tudo aqui, todas aquelas informações que eu elenquei, o que é mais importante, o que ficou para mim. Okay? Então, resumindo em um parágrafo, tudo que eu li, o que, que ficou para mim. E aí, a revisão, né? a, não, desculpa, a resenha, que é o review. Então, firerê, é fichamento, resumo, resenha. A resenha é quando você faz uma avaliação do texto. Okay? Então, qual é o mérito, a metodologia está é, apropriada, não está apropriada, existem é, lacunas, o texto é relevante, não é relevante, poderia ter tido um outro approach, poderia ter feito escolhas diferentes, poderia ter sido organizado diferente, porque isso é importante na hora de estabelecer o diálogo entre os textos, ok? Então, isso ajuda a nossa vida. É, é importante não jogar água para fora da bacia quando a gente está fazendo pesquisa, porque são muitas demandas, né? Então, quando a gente está lendo o texto, é muito importante pensar que essa leitura não seja em vão, que eu possa utilizar ela para alguma coisa depois. E a gente nunca sabe quando isso vai voltar a ser relevante, né? Talvez é, eu li um texto lá no começo da minha pesquisa, no primeiro semestre, no primeiro mês que eu entrei no mestrado, no doutorado, aquilo não fez o menor sentido, e aí depois de ter coletado dados, depois de ter feito algumas análises de dados, algumas questões surgiram, e aí eu lembrei que eu li um texto que falava disso, mas eu não lembro do jeito que ele falava, aí eu posso referenciar o meu fichamento, o meu firerê, né? o meu fichamento resumo e resenha, é, ao invés de ter que ler o texto todo de novo. Né? Então, são é, ferramentas aí que nos ajudam a ser mais efetivos no processo de escrita. Ok? Let's see. The literature review concept is kind of similar on the concepts I had about the discussion topic. Hmm. I guess I've made more annotated bibliographies than literature reviews. That's a very important thing, Nicholas, because it depends on the type of paper you are writing, right? So there are different kinds of papers, so different kinds of studies. Sometimes um, the, the data for your study is the literature review, right? Is the bibliography you are analyzing. So if you are writing one text that is a literature review, and that's one possibility that I'm going to show you when you're going to discuss the organization, right? Your data is the literature. Your data is the text you've read, right? The knowledge that is already established in the field. In this case, the literature review is the discussion, right? Of course. Uh, now, an annotated bibliography as part of a text tends not to be very effective because it lacks, right, something that ties everything together. It lacks the conversation, right? So where is you in the text? What is your voice, okay? How can you compare? How can you put those people to talk, okay? How can you put different theories, different knowledge to talk, okay? Uh, maybe one research complements the other. Maybe one research refutes the other the other. Maybe they offer um, very different perspectives on the same theme, and that is relevant to your topic, okay? So, the importance of writing a literature review is establishing a conversation. It's a dialogue, okay? It's not only a list, okay, of um, research. Great. Everything good so far? Any questions? Because now we are going to discuss some assumptions regarding the functions of a literature review. So as I said, when it comes to literature review, there, there are lots of variables, okay? There are lots of it depends, okay? Uh, there are not a very fixed set of rules, okay? But they can uh, offer us various insights and they can perform uh, a plethora of communicative functions, 
okay? What I'm going to show you now are some options of functions, okay, that may or may not uh, be performed by a literature review section. Your job right now is to tell me, do you think they are a function of the liter literature review or they're not, okay? Again, it doesn't mean that every literature review section will perform all of those functions, okay? Those are possibilities, not rules. But before I move on, tell me, are you with me? Are you following? Do you have any questions? What are your thoughts so far? What do you think? Uh, it's very good because literature review, it's a section that it's, uh, it, it shows, it, it, it displays various variations across disciplines. So if we take a look at the literature, uh, literature review section for humanities, it's a completely different thing than everything we're talking about here. Uh, in humanities, we always have a literature review section. Uh, even when it's not a literature review uh, paper. Uh, and we also have an introduction. So in, in humanities, we always have introduction and literature review in which we explain the concepts uh, of our, our research. Okay. Uh, for hard sciences, however, it's not always the case. Sometimes when the objective of our research is not to review literature, but rather to present new data, right? The introduction suffices, okay? The introduction is sufficient to show uh, where we're coming from and where we're going. So what is the starting point? However, there's also the possibility in the hard sciences field to write a whole paper that is a literature review, okay? So there's this distinction. Tudo certo? Falem comigo para eu saber que vocês estão aqui, que vocês não estão na outra aba vendo o Facebook. <risos> todo mundo está acompanhando? Está todo mundo comigo? <risos> Interajam aqui, que eu estou... Tô... Quarentena, gente. Estou solitário. Preciso de human interaction. Talk to me. Tudo certo, Jefferson? Legal. Estou esperando saber que vocês estão acompanhando para a gente seguir. Ok, legal. Tudo ok? Rafaela, Santino, Thaís. Ok, and now, ok, very good. <laughs> so let's move on. So I'm going to show you again, right? I'm going to show you assumptions of possible functions that may or may not be performed by a literature review section, ok? And you're going to tell me if you agree or if you disagree. Is this a function of a literature review? It's not a function of the literature review. And why, ok? Do you usually do this or do you, you don't tend to do this? Let's go. First assumption. So it's a function of the literature review to place each work in the context of its contribution to understanding the research problem being studied. Okay? Do you understand? So to place each work in the context of its contribution to understanding the research problem being studied. Okay? So in the literature review, one of the functions is to uh, only uh, talk about works that will help us understand the problem that is being studied, the problem that is the object of our research, that is verbalizing the thesis statement. Do you think it's a function of the literature review? If so, why? Why is it important? Do you usually do that? You don't tend to do that? What do you say?
place in each work in the context of its contribution to understanding the research problem being studied. And then remember that research problem is the same as research question, thesis statement, hypothesis, they all refer to the same thing, okay? So different ways of saying uh, the same thing, the same communicative function. So the objective of a research, the purpose that guides us. So why do we do research, okay? In order to answer a research question, right? In order to solve a research problem, in order to test a hypothesis. Agree, disagree, yes, it is a function of the literature review. No, it's not a function. So we don't need to um, maybe refer to sources that will help us understand our problem. And we can refer to other sources that I think it's important. Maybe there is one uh, central research in this field that it's not directly re related to, to, to our research question, but still I want to include it because I like it. I think it's very important. So Samantha, the question is, do you think this is a function of the literature review or not? So is a function of the literature review to place each work in the context of its contribution to understanding the research problem being studied or not? Ok, agree. Concordo, acredito que seja uma parte importante da revisão literária citar o conhecimento disponível. Ok. E aí, ó, eu acho que a questão central aqui é qual conhecimento é esse, né? Qual é o escopo do conhecimento que eu é, vou mobilizar na minha revisão de literatura? Tá? A questão aqui dessa frase é que todo trabalho, né? Todo é, work, todo estudo que eu vou trazer para minha revisão de literatura precisa contribuir para a compreensão do meu problema de pesquisa, ok? Todo trabalho que eu trago, ele precisa de alguma forma dialogar, estar relacionado e contribuir para a compreensão do leitor sobre o meu problema de pesquisa, tá? Então, eu preciso mostrar, aí de novo, é a função do escritor, do pesquisador, quando está escrevendo o texto, mostrar, deixar claro para o leitor como que esse trabalho, essa informação que eu estou é, mobilizando aqui, pode contribuir para a compreensão de uma questão X, ok? Very good. Next one. Describe the relationship of each work to the others under consideration. Hum, acho que eu dei spoiler this. Eu me empolgo, vou falando mais do que eu devia antes do, do tempo. Mas, do you think this is a function of the literature review section? To describe the relationship, focus, keyword, relationship, of each work to the others under consideration. So, there is a list of different sources, different studies, okay? And is it a function of the literature review to describe the relationship of these works or not? Merely making a list is enough. Deixa eu ver o que vocês falaram sobre a anterior enquanto vocês vão escrevendo. Esse processo de esquematizar e hierarquizar e situar o conhecimento científico a ser abordado é fundamental. Se ele não dá para saber se isso é relevante ou não. Very good. Com certeza. E acho que isso que você falou, Santino, esquematizar, hierarquizar e situar é, são palavras muito boas para descrever as funções da, é, da, da revisão de literatura. Né? E acho que a primeira lá, a assumption, está é, no situar, está né? no campo do situar. Então, eu estou situando os trabalhos que já existem com a minha pesquisa. Okay? Então, eu estou construindo, botando as árvorezinhas ali do território de pesquisa, né? para usar a metáfora que a gente estava utilizando antes do paraquedas na, na floresta lá. É, é, e aí as árvores precisam funcionar um propósito, né? elas precisam ter uma função naquele ecossistema ali. É, por que, que eu estou falando desse trabalho X aqui? Né? O que, que esse trabalho X, o que, que esse conhecimento pode contribuir na compreensão do meu problema de pesquisa, do objetivo dessa pesquisa, ok? E aí se eu não consigo responder essa pergunta, né? se eu não consigo pensar como que esse trabalho contribui para a compreensão, 
do meu programa de pesquisa, aí talvez seja uma questão revisar se eu de, deva realmente incluir esse trabalho na revisão de literatura. E aí depende do tipo de revisão de le, literatura que a gente está fazendo. Como eu disse, tem muitos dependes nessa, nessa sessão. E, mas aí a gente vai falar disso mais para frente. E aí, sobre essa... Describe the relationship of each work to the others under consideration. Is it a function to describe the relationship of works? What does it mean to describe the relationship of each work? It's a function. And why? Why is it important? And why does it mean to describe the relationship? What do you understand? Jefferson disagrees. Why, Jefferson? Interesting. What do you say? What is your take? What is your view? What say you? São Santinos é, sim, haverá sempre trabalhos que, são, que serão centrais na abordagem e outros que compõem, juntos e relacionados, dão um corpo que você quer para a situalização do que, do que será trabalhado a partir daí. Ok, uh, eu acho que o, o ponto central aqui é a ideia da, da conversa que eu estava falando, né? de que escrever uma revisão de literatura é criar uma conversa, botar os autores para conversar, como eu sempre digo. Né? Então, é sempre, mais do que uma coxa de retalhos, né? é ter você ali no meio costurando essas informações, tá? Como que esse corpo de conhecimentos já existente, aí que eu tô criando um corpo sólido de conhecimentos, né? Eu tô elencando aqui pesquisas, né? Pedaços de conhecimento científico que eu acredito que vão ser úteis na construção de um pensamento para compreensão dos meus dados, interpretação, compreensão dos meus dados, né? E aí eu preciso deixar claro como que essas pesquisas funcionam juntas, né? Para que a revisão de literatura não desabe. Né? Ela precisa ser consistente, coesa e coerente em si, ok? Então eu preciso dizer como que um trabalho está relacionado com o outro. Como que uma pesquisa amplia a outra, questiona a outra, revisa a outra, é, discorda da outra, ou então aprofunda, é, ou testa novas hipóteses que foram levantadas é, por outras pesquisas, né? Como que o conhecimento científico dialogou na comunidade e como que eu estou fazendo parte dessa conversa, tá? Então, a revisão de literatura é botar os autores que eu já li para conversar, tá? Para que mais para frente, se for o caso, se o trabalho não for só a revisão de literatura, eu participar dessa conversa também, tá? Então, eu boto os autores que já existem para conversar, eu crio uma conversa ali a partir do conhecimento que já existe, já está estabelecido, e aí eu entro nessa conversa, eu participo dela, falo assim, ó... Você estava falando A, B e C aí, né? Então, fulano conversou, fulano concordou com o ciclano, é, fulano aprofundou o trabalho de ciclano, e eu vou dizer que pá, ok? E aí você mostra seus dados. <risos> então, a revisão de literatura é o estabelecimento de uma conversa entre os conhecimentos já existentes, para que você possa participar dessa conversa depois com o conhecimento que você desenvolveu na sua pesquisa, ok? Nicholas said... I think it's one of the possibilities. The relationship about the findings are important. It supports our, our important support for our thesis statements or hypothesis. Very good. That's perfect. That's perfect. Next one. 
identify new ways to interpret prior research, so research that came back. That's an interesting one. I haven't talked about that much. So is it a function of the literature review to identify new ways to interpret prior research? And what do you understand by the sentence? But it, what does it mean to, try to interpret prior research, new ways of interpreting prior research? How do you see this? What do you think? Identify new ways to interpret prior research. There's a lot that can be said about this. What do you mean by interpreting prior research in a new way? Agree, disagree, is this a function of the literature review section? It's not a function. I don't see the purpose of it. We shouldn't be worried about this. And again, remember that we're talking about possibilities rather than rules, okay? So it doesn't mean that every literature review section has to perform all of those functions, right? Absolutely. Uh, those are possibilities. They can, but they don't have to. Right? Or they cannot if you disagree, right? <laughs> so that's the it's open for discussion, it's debatable. What do you think? Agree, disagree? Don't know. Didn't understand what you're talking, teacher. I have no idea what you're talking about. I think it is in a function of the literature review, but the discussion session. Hmm. Acredito que essa função seria realizada na discussão e não na revisão de literatura. Legal. Legal. Todo mundo concorda? I agree with you, Rafaela and Thais. Uh, bearing in mind that, again, Depends. <laughs> Sometimes the discussion is the literature review, right? So if you have a whole paper that, uh, so the whole paper is a literature review. In this case, the discussion is a literature review itself, okay? So the data I have are the previous research that I've read, okay? Um, so in this case, both, right? In this case, both in the literature review and the discussion because we're referring to the same topic of uh, the same section of a text, okay? But sometimes the objective of our research is not to review previous knowledge, but rather to present new knowledge, okay? To present new data. In this case, usually, right, uh, we either have one section that comprises introduction and literature review, or two separate sections, right, or subsections, uh, one for introduction and one for literature review. In this case, the literature review is usually very brief, Right. Um, in this in these cases, right, there might be there's a possibility of indicating right ways of interpreting prior research that might um, be addressed further in the text. Okay, so I can uh, return to this discussion further in the text in the discussion section of a paper. So yes, both. Acredito que essa função... Ah, já li. Sempre sinto como apresentar novas perguntas mais do que novas interpretações, mas não discordo. Uhum, legal. Qual que é a diferença? Será a pessoa da linguagem, né? Ficou encasquetada com as palavras. Mas qual que é a diferença entre apresentar novas perguntas e novas interpretações? Uma pergunta, será que não pode ser uma interpretação também? Uma interpretação não pode ser uma pergunta? Eu concordo com vocês, Antino. Acho que as perguntas são mais importantes. Muitas vezes as perguntas são mais importantes que as respostas quando a gente está pensando na revisão de literatura. 
e apontar possibilidades, né? Então, apontar para dados que têm sido tradicionalmente interpretados de uma maneira X, a partir de uma perspectiva X, e apontar a possibilidade que eles sejam interpretados sobre outro viés, né? I agree. Sometimes the data published may have a different meaning after new findings that could be published years later. In this case, writer may put those information together. Perfect. Perfect. Very well said, Nicholas. That's it. That's the core of the discussion, right? Sometimes uh, current information might transform the way we see uh, previous data, prior data, okay, prior research. So that's very important. And again, when the whole paper is the literature review, the discussion, the literature review refer to the same thing because the data is the research you're reading, okay? You've read. Uh, but when you have a research article that aims at presenting new data in these cases, right? Uh, usually, when we do this function, it's very briefly, right? So there's not a whole discussion. Unless it's the, it's the core uh, of your paper, unless it's the very objective of your paper, right? Uh, if your thesis statement is presenting, identifying new ways of interpreting prior research, of course, you're going to explore it further, right? But if not, you might have an indication only of it. We need to focus on what is important on our research paper because it's not a very extensive text, okay? So when you're writing our dissertations and thesis, right, we might explore a lot on those. But if we're writing a research paper, which is a shorter text, we might have to select which of the discussions we're going to carry out. And then again, choices. And then, reveal any gaps that exist in the literature. Is this a function of the literature review? I got my haircut, so learning how to deal with it. <laughs> what do you think? We talked about that in the introduction section, right? So you're going to see, for those of you who are not satisfied with your introduction, you're going to see that information we discuss uh, on further modules, further classes, right? Might be useful for you when reviewing your previous text, previous sections of a text, okay? So you might use everything you're going to discuss today to review your introduction. It's not, it's not going to be the, the homework, okay? But still, if you want to, you might take a look at it after the class. What do you say? Com certeza. <laughs> I agree. Very good. Very good. So, guys, again, uh, this, distinction, this distinction is central for us, right? Because sometimes a paper is, uh, the whole paper is a literature review, sometimes a paper uh, has a literature review uh, and an introduction, okay? When we do have both sections and it's possible to have an introduction and a literature review as separate sections of a text, there is this possibility of indicating the gap in the introduction and exploring the gap and the implications of this gap in the literature review, okay? Possibilities. Uh, importante apresentar que ainda não foi respondido sobre o assunto perfeito e é por isso que a gente faz pesquisa, né, Thaís? É para é, cobrir as lacunas, preencher lacunas, né? Então, perfeito que você disse, com certeza. When real literature uh, that is relevant to your work, gaps end up appearing naturally in the review. Very good. I disagree. Any gaps seems, seem a little ambitious. I would say that if I said every gap, I would be ambitious. Right? Any gaps is not ambitious at all, right? Maybe reveal the main gaps that the work will try to find, to fill, right? The main gap is more, if you say main gaps, it is more ambitious than saying any gaps, okay? Remember that any refers to qualquer, tá? Now reveal any gaps, qualquer gap que aparecer. Not every, okay? Not every gap, but any gap. Very good. 
Eu sinto como se fosse aquela fresta na porta que você encontra para entrar em um local de interesse. Perfeito, perfeita analogia, Santino, né? Então, o gap é a... Outra metáfora que dá para usar é o fiozinho da, é, do suéter, sabe? Quando ele tá se desfazendo, você começa a puxar e aí você tira um monte de coisa de lá. Porque quando você identifica um gap, né? É, e você explora esse gap, e aí você pode identificar o gap na introdução e explorar o gap na sessão de literatura, revisão de literatura, quando o trabalho tem essas duas sessões. É, muitas outras coisas, é, muitas outras informações e muitos outros gaps aparecem, né? Então, quem nunca leu um trabalho, foi, é, ficou interessado em uma das referências, aí leu a referência desse trabalho, aí nessa referência tinha outra referência, que tinha outra referência, que tinha outra referência, e aí é um ciclo sem fim, e aí no Rei Leão, né? A gente pode ir para sempre, para sempre, fazendo esse movimento, até que a gente decida parar, ok? Então, isso é muito, é, é muito central, assim, pro, pro trabalho, pro... pro é, para o que a gente faz enquanto cientistas escrevendo textos científicos, tá? É, esse é um processo que se a gente decidir, se a gente não botar um fim nele, ele nunca acaba, tá? Revisar o texto, escrever o texto, fazer revisão, é, levantamento de, de sources, de, de trabalhos, é, tudo isso pode ser um processo infinito, pode ir para sempre e para sempre se a gente não decidir parar, se a gente não delimitar o nosso escopo, né? Então, até onde eu vou olhar, até, até qual tema, onde eu vou parar... E em que momento eu vou decidir que meu texto está finalizado, meu texto está pronto, ok? Porque se a gente não decidir, não tiver esse momento de tô, é suficiente, é isso que eu tenho para apresentar, o texto não acaba nunca, o texto vai para sempre, para sempre, para sempre, ok? Very good. Next one. Is it a function of the literature review? To resolve conflicts amongst seemingly contrad contradictory previous studies. To resolve conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies. What do you say? Is it a function of the literature review? To resolve conflicts amongst seemingly contradictory previous studies. So I have this, I found in my uh, database search, there are those two very big questions, very two opposing views on the same theme. Um, and uh, I want you maybe take a look on what people are talking about it, where people stay, stand on this question, so what are the opinions of several authors regarding the same topic, the same contradictory uh, question, and then I might offer the reader a view, I offer a reader uh, a take, my take, a personal take, uh, always based on fact and evidence, on this question. So you guys said, I disagree. This seems more like the discussion topic. Mm. Not in the literature review, but in the discussion. Mm. Uh, I would say it's a possibility. Yes, it's a possible function of the literature review. Uh, but it's a, as, uh, as I guess Nicola said, it's a very ambitious function, right, to be displayed, to be performed by the literature review section, unless your whole paper is a literature review, right? In this case, I would say it's fine, because, again, the discussion in the literature review refers to the same sections. Uh, but usually, a way of resolving conflict, uh, resolving a question that is contradictory in the field, is presenting new data, right? And you can only talk about new data after you've presented it, so in the discussion. Okay? Uh, but you might also rationalize this discussion, right? Again, it depends on the nature of your research, the nature of the discussion, right? So if you're talking about, about more conceptual ideas, uh, more conceptual data, right? 
this might be done by reflecting about the data only and not presenting new data, okay? But if we're talking about uh, what is solid, what is factable, right, for science, which is usually the case for hard sciences, biology, for example, um, usually a way of resolving conflicts is presenting new data or new ways of interpreting the same data. Discord, sempre apresenta esses pontos somente na discussão que eu vou discorrer e quem sabe harmonizar essas questões. Very good. É, um movimento muito é, comum no texto científico é apresentar visões, apresentar várias interpretações para que eu possa me alinhar a uma dessas interpretações. Tá? Então eu posso apresentar várias teorias de compreensão dos dados, várias é, abordagens metodológicas para dizer ó, eu discordo de todas essas que eu apresentei, mas eu concordo com essa última aqui com essa uma, por esses motivos. Então, é um, motivo, é um jeito de justificar suas escolhas teórico-metodológicas, tá? Então, a teoria que vai me embasar a, o, as escolhas da metodologia, né? Se for o caso, é, se ela precisar ser justificada, né? E aí depende muito do quão essas coisas estão consolidadas na comunidade científica, né? No, na área de vocês. É, mas isso é uma alternativa, tá? Então, dizer, ó, existem várias maneiras de se interpretar, de se olhar para esses dados, né? Várias abordagens possíveis sobre essa questão, né? As abordagens são essa, essa, essa e essa e essa, e eu me alinho para os propósitos deste trabalho, eu me alinho à abordagem X, à compreensão X, né? O caminho que eu vou seguir é este por estes motivos. Ok? Very good. And then, identify areas of prior research to prevent duplication of effort. Hmm. What do you say? Would you say it's a function of the literature review? Would you say it's important for the scientific inquiry? So when we're making science, should we be worried about duplication of effort? Or it's not a question at all. Have you ever thought about it? What do you say? Se for o trabalho de revisão, aí sim, pois ao final não se fará uma discussão, mas um resumo, um apontamento para o futuro. Uhum. É... O pessoal da linguagem fica pegando as palavras, né? Mas eu acho que é também uma discussão, sim, Santino. É uma discussão de uma natureza diferente. Eu entendo o que você quis dizer. É que não é uma discussão de quando a gente apresenta novos dados, né? É outro, é outro tipo de discussão, mas é também uma discussão. É, que é mais que um resumo, eu diria, né? Porque tem a sua, de novo, né? Não é só um, um apontamento de trabalhos, né? Não é só uma lista de trabalhos o que eles disseram, mas tem a sua, a sua interpretação ali no meio, o fio condutor. Então, sobre isso, vamos ver o que vocês estão falando. Ó, I agree, that saves a lot of time and efforts. Of course, of course, right? Uh, fundamental, trabalhar com o que já foi feito sem nada de novo não vai ter nenhuma relevância, perfeito, né? É, a gente estava falando muito sobre identificar os gaps, né? Aqui é o outro lado, identificar o que já existe para que eu não possa fazer, porque eu não precise fazer de novo, né? Então, se aquilo não é um gap, se esse conhecimento já existe, não tem porquê, não tem causa, motivo, razão ou circunstância para que eu faça a mesma coisa duas vezes, né? É, porque não existem contribuições novas a serem apresentadas se aquele conhecimento já existe. Okay? E aí, pensar o como que o quão novo é o conhecimento que eu estou apresentando, que eu estou criando, que eu estou desenvolvendo, e como que isso pode contribuir com a comunidade. Tá? Então, se esse conhecimento já existe, já contribui com a comunidade, né? não tem por que eu fazer de novo. Very good. Acho que tem mais um. Mais um. Olha lá. Acho que esse é o último. Uh, point the way in fulfilling a need for additional research. Ah. So what did, how do you understand this uh, this sentence? Do you agree with that? What is your take? What what is 
what what is he talking about Point the way in fulfilling a need for additional research. Hmm. Is it different than uh, identifying a gap? Is it the same thing? What is the difference? What would you say? What's your take? Point the way in fulfilling a need for additional research. How do you understand the sentence? What is the function here? And is it important? Is it not important? Did you understand the sentence? Is it not clear at all? What's your take? Did you understand the sentence, guys? Did you understand what they're trying to communicate? Point the way in fulfilling a need for additional research. What does it mean? Is it different than research gap? Is Does it seem like the same a research gap? Às vezes você está fazendo uma revisão para um trabalho específico e descobre outras possibilidades, outras demandas. Perfeito. Acho que o Santino acertou o X da questão. O research gap geralmente se refere aquilo que vai ser, ao gap, a lacuna que vai ser preenchida pelo seu trabalho, ok? Existe, entretanto, a possibilidade de apresentar outras lacunas que possam ser preenchidas por outros trabalhos, ok? Que não necessariamente vai ser preenchida pelo seu trabalho. A gente não consegue dar conta do mundo, né? A gente não consegue abraçar o mundo em um trabalho só, em um artigo só. É, mas isso não significa que a gente deva ignorar as lacunas que a gente pode encontrar ao redor, ao, no meio do caminho aí, é, conforme a gente avança na nossa pesquisa, tá? Então, às vezes, como o Santino muito bem disse, é, a gente está fazendo uma pesquisa focada em um tema X, né? É, uma questão específica da minha pesquisa, e aí, quando eu estou fazendo as minhas leituras, ou quando, é, enfim, dos meus dados, dos meus experimentos, aí eu encontro novos gaps, né? Outras perguntas que não têm resposta. É importante indicar isso para que o leitor tenha... É, consciência disso e que talvez, imagine, sei lá, o que o leitor também é um pesquisador da área, provavelmente, né, isso é muito comum, inclusive, é, ele possa se debruçar sobre uma dessas questões e essa questão possa ser respondida. Então, existe uma contribuição em apontar lacunas, mesmo que não seja a lacuna que vai ser preenchida pelo seu trabalho, ok? Very good. Tem mais um. Agora esse é o último. <risos> Locate your own research within the context of existing literature. Hmm. And then, is it a function of the literature review? Locate your own research. So place, so tell me where my research stands. So in this territory, right? So everything that, that is already established in the scientific field. Where is my research standing? 
So what is the role of my research in this community, in this conversation? What is the information that I want to communicate? What is my part in this dialogue? Agree? Disagree? Yes, no? What do you say? Cater your own research within the context of existing literature. And then. What do you say? Is it a function of the literature review? Not at all. What do you say? Locate your own research within the context of existing literature. So where am I, where does my research stand in comparison to this body of knowledge, of well-established knowledge? How can I participate in this conversation? What is the role? What is my part here? What are the things that I'm going to say, that I have to say, that haven't said beforehand, or that wouldn't have been said otherwise? Eu concordo, porque acredito que faça parte, pois buscamos complementar a literatura existente. Very good. Very good, Erika. I would say this is not a function of a literature review. This is the function of a literature review. Right? Uh, even if your whole paper is a literature review, então, mesmo para aqueles trabalhos que são uma revisão de literatura, quando o trabalho todo é a revisão de literatura, ou seja, a revisão de literatura não é uma sessão do trabalho, mas sim o trabalho todo, até nesses casos, existe é, um propósito na ação de revisar, tá? Então, revisar por revisar, é, revisar não é um fim em si, né? Eu reviso para alguma coisa, eu reviso para fornecer é, um resumo sobre o estado da arte na questão X, porque isso é relevante para a comunidade nesse momento. Eu reviso sobre o tema X para oferecer, é, para mostrar as contradições, para mostrar as discussões que existem na comunidade, as tensões. Eu reviso para apontar lacunas que podem ser preenchidas por novas pesquisas, ok? Então, até quando eu estou revisando é, no trabalho todo, sem apresentar novos dados, é, existe um propósito. Então, existe um propósito do texto em si, do texto por si, ok? E isso precisa estar tá claro para o leitor, tá? Como que todas essas informações se relacionam? O que, que elas dizem? Sobre os novos dados que eu vou apresentar ou sobre o próprio ato de revisar a literatura. Locating your research means it's valuable in that context. Very good, right? So it's a way of assuring the reader understands why is it important that we do what we do. Very good. Now this is the last one. Okay? Guys, so far so good. Any questions so far? We're going to talk about database search a little bit. It's going to be very quick because I know most of you uh, is already used to researching databases, different databases, uh, but I'm going to present you with some uh, features, with some mechanisms, search mechanisms that 
might help you if you if you're not aware of this. I, I guess most of you already use them, but just to 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 officialize to solidify this uh, this knowledge, I'm going to present to you the Boolean operators. Do you know Boolean operators? Have you ever heard about this expression before? And some search engines, okay? And then the data database we talked about it before talking about the introduction. We talked about some. Uh, indexation platforms, open science platforms, uh, different types of journals. Uh, there's also the possibility of accessing the university websites. There is usually a library section, like an online library section for each university website. And then you might use those mechanisms, those operators, those engines when making your research. Okay. Uh, so again, possibilities, right? That's my role here today, to present you with possibilities. But before I move on, so far, so good. Any questions? Would you like to ask anything, to comment on anything? We have been discussing um, up to this point the very function of a literature review, the very communicative performance to the text of a literature review section, okay? So what does it mean to revise literature? What does it mean to write a literature review section? And what is the importance of it? So what is the function, okay, of a literature review? But writing a literature review implies having read a lot of text. And because you have read a lot of text, before having read a lot of text, you must have search on a database, okay? So it's previous, database search is previous to writing your literature review, okay? Any questions so far so good? Everybody's good, everybody's with me, everybody's following. Okay, very good. So when we're going to approach a database search, which is a process through which you have access to the texts that are going to be revealed in the literature review section, right? Uh, the first thing that needs to be established is your keywords, okay? And this is very important, this is central, okay? So we need to establish the keywords you are going to use uh, in order to search in a database. And then in order to do so, you might have to talk to your advisor. You might have to take a look at different abstracts and keyword sections, right? Because they are in, uh, the texts are indexed based on the keyword section of the, of the paper, okay? So that's a function of the keywords. Uh, so this is very important. You might also want to consider synonyms, okay? Synonyms for the same term because they might offer you different results, all right? Uh, usually, when searching for our database uh, for new papers, we are using more than one uh, keyword. Okay, there are different ways of combining those keywords in order to have the most uh, effective results. Okay, so you might want to narrow your results, or you might want to sorry to narrow your results or to broaden your results. Okay, so if you want a more extensive uh, state of art review, you might want to broaden your, res your results. If you want a more specific uh, result, you might want to narrow okay, your results because ain't nobody got time to read all of the texts that have been published on the thing. Okay? So you need to develop uh, selecting mechanisms. In order to do so, we have Boolean operators. What are Boolean operators? Those are research mechanisms, okay? Functions that might help us uh, using the right, uh, achieving the right results, okay? The most appropriate, the, more, the most efficient results. So let's say you have two keywords and you need to search text related to those two things, A and B, right? Uh, if you go to a research database and you search a, and you use the Boolean operator, R, B, right? This is going to offer you a very broad scope, okay? So you, you might have access to a very extensive list of research on that theme because they're going to offer you the results that include 
A alone, B alone, and both A and B. Okay, so this is the first Boolean operator. When searching a database, you might use R to uh, to acquire, to access a very broad scope of research. Okay, but let's say you want to narrow it down and you want to only achieve, only find the papers that talk about both A and B. Okay, so let's say for example you're searching about education and um, inclusion. Okay, education and inclusion. So if you search with education or inclusion, right, so you're going to be offered papers to talk about education only, billions of them, inclusion only, billions of them, and both education and inclusion, okay? But if you want to take a look at this specific intersection, you might use the Boolean operator of AND, okay? So you might go to your search database of your preference, right, uh, and write a, first keyword, and B, second keyword. So in the example I was giving you, uh, education and inclusion, okay? So it's a way of narrowing down your research, okay? And then you have uh, access to a more specific list of papers that might help you in the process. Alternatively, you might also want to find terms that refer to one specific keyword, but don't include a second keyword, okay? In this case, use the Boolean operator not, okay? So when you're making your, your research in the database, you write down the research mechanism, A, not B, okay? So let's see, I want to research about apples, apple, but I want you to, talk, to research only about the fruit and not the company, right? Or the other way around. Uh, so I, I only want you to investigate the company and not the fruit, Apple, okay? So I might write in my database search, Apple, not fruit, okay? Some database searches use a hyphen, a minus sign to perform the same Boolean operator, okay? So then you're going to be offered the results that refer to only the first keywords and don't include the second keywords, okay? Very good, very easy, very simple. I guess most of you already know about those Boolean operators, okay? But there are also some other functions. Okay, and then you can combine this with uh, more than two keywords as well, right? So there are thousands of possibilities in order to spe really specify what you're looking for and have access to the, to the papers that are only relevant to your theme, okay? The thing is, there has been a lot of knowledge developed already, right? Uh, and we don't have time to read all of this knowledge. We don't have time to read all of the papers that have been published on one given topic. So we need mechanisms, we need techniques to select the most relevant, okay? And those Boolean operators are techniques that offer you this possibility, all right? So you might combine R and 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 NOT in different ways, okay? So if you use, for example, the, the first example I have here, let me see. Here. So I have travel as a first keyword or tourism. So both of them. Okay. But travel and tourism only when it's related to the web. Okay. So the internet. I'm not, I'm not interested in travel in general terms or tourism in general terms. Okay. But I'm interested in both of them as they relate to the internet, for example. And then I can uh, narrow down the scope of my research. Okay. The same here, right? Let's say I'm talking about travel and tourism, but not about tourists, okay? Not about the people that travel, but the action of travel, traveling itself. Let's say it's my research, my area of research, okay? Then I can say travel and tourism, but not tourists, okay? So it's a way of really uh, specifying the scope of my research and the scope of papers that I'm going to have access to. There are also uh, different mechanisms that might help us. The first one is truncation, which is very interesting. Most of the uh, university, university library websites offer this function, okay? Which is searching for one keyword with different suffixes, different terminations, okay? And the way of doing so is adding an asterisk at the end of the word, okay? So let's say, for example, I search for the term remand, Remand and then asterisk, okay? So the database will show me results for both. Rem re re remedy, okay? Remedies, remedial, and remediation, okay? So all different terminations, all different suffixes 
that we all allow us to have a access to plethora of works, okay? There is also the possibility of using the function of wildcard, okay? So different ways of writing the same words, okay? So when there's this one term, they have been written in different ways, and I want I don't want to search for one specific graphy of the, the term, but rather the term itself, right? I might include... Deixa eu esconder minha câmera aqui na frente. I might include a question mark, a question mark or an exclamation mark, an exclamation point, okay, to the word. So, for example, let's say I search for the word woman, but instead of the second vowel, I include a question mark, okay? So, the, the database will show me results for both woman and women, okay? So, different graphics of the same term. The same if I use the exclamation point, okay? So, if I use, if I search for the term color, okay? But I want to search for both the American graphy of it and the British graphy of it with a new, right? I can add an exclamation point and then the database will show me results for both color without the U and with color with the U, okay? Other uh, mechanisms for search on database include quotation marks. So when your keyword is uh, compounded by more than one word, okay? It's very useful to use quotation marks aspas, ok? Então, quando sua palavra-chave é uma expressão com mais de uma palavra, por exemplo, é, inclusão social, ok? É interessante que vocês façam a pesquisa na base de dados com as aspas para que o sistema entenda que você está falando do termo inclusão social e não ofereça resultados para vocês que, que se referenciam somente à inclusão e somente ao social, ok? Então, você está dizendo para o texto que eu estou precisando essa expressão, inclusão social, quotation marks, ok? Se você está fazendo uma revisão de literatura, um artigo de revisão de literatura, e aí você quer delimitar um escopo de tempo, né? então, os trabalhos que foram publicados sobre o tema X nos últimos cinco anos, por exemplo, então, a função de data range também pode ser muito útil para você, que você pode delimitar é, os anos de publicação, e aí você faz um escopo, um estado de... É, uma revisão de literatura de estado da arte com base nesse tempo que você delimitou, ok? Você pode também incluir é, outras, outros requerimentos para os resultados, como, por exemplo, é, apenas trabalhos que foram revisados pelos pares ou tipo de texto, trabalho de revisão de literatura ou trabalhos que apresentam novos resultados, ok? Very good. So, just some insights. Let me peer back. So just some insights, very quick insights on uh, how to search on databases, okay? So far, so good. I think this is, uh, most of those functions and most of those mechanisms are very uh, common, right? So for those of you who are, and I think most of you are already used to searching on databases, right? Those are not new information, I imagine, okay? But this is very useful and this is a very a good thing to remember, right? When we're having our um, search, okay? When we're searching, we're consulting our database, okay? So before we research, we search. So far, so good. Any new information, any useful information on the database mechanisms, search mechanisms? Everybody's following? Because we're going to talk about the textual architecture now. And then we have a video that we're going to summarize everything that we've discussed today. Right? Is everybody following? Any questions? Any doubts about the Boolean operators, about the truncation, the wild card, the quotation marks, date range, type of text, peer reviewed, only texts? Was this information useful at all? Are you following? Is everybody good? Everything is okay? Okay. Okay. Great. So when it comes to textual architecture, right? Uh, again, when we're talking about literature review, there's a lot of it depends, right? So there are there's not a fixed set of rules, but rather possibilities, all right? Uh, your re literature review might be selective or comprehensive, 
right? And it also might be a standalone or part of a brother, okay? Uh, we have been talking a lot about the second differentiation, which is a standalone or part of a brother, okay? So a standalone literature review is a text, a full article that is a literature review, okay? So the whole article has the purpose of revealing literature. That's what we call standalone, okay? That's a standalone literature review. Uh, it might have all of the sections of a research paper, introduction, uh, methods, results, discussion, okay? But all of those will refer to the act of reviewing literature itself, and they might present uh, a different organization, different characteristics, right? But also, your literature review might be part of a broader, okay? So it might be part of a broader text. So let's say your aim with your research article is to present new data, okay? So to share fresh insight on a given topic, okay? In this case, the literature review is going to be one section of a whole text, right? It's common, for example, uh, to have a literature, a literature review section in our thesis or dissertations, okay? Uh, when we're talking about research articles, it's very common for the hard sciences field to uh, include a literature review and the introduction, okay? So, introduction and literature review might uh, refer to the same part of a text sometimes, okay? And in this case, the literature review is very short, all right? So, if you are offering a literature review as a part of a broader, right, it's not, it's not going to be a so in-depth exploration uh, as it would be if it was a standalone, right? But then, your uh, literature review might also be selective or comprehensive, okay? What is the difference? Selective is when you, as a research, read several papers, right? And then you select, right? That's why it's called selective. You select the one you think are the ones you think are the most relevant for the reasons you, you, you have, okay? So it's one uh, it's a methodological choice. It's a theoretical methodological choice. You're going to be responsible for this decision. So you select the pieces of knowledge, the previous study and previous research that refer to your um, thesis, your research problem, and how they contribute to the, this problem, okay? And then you might have uh, different cri criteria for selecting, okay? But also, there is this type of literature review that's called comprehensive, okay? And in this kind of literature review, the criteria for selecting the texts, okay, they are decided, they're established in the moments of the database search, Okay, not in the moments of the writing activity, because uh, in the com in a comprehensive literature review, you reveal all of the papers that you found that you found on your database search. Okay, so let's say, for example, uh, I'm writing a comprehensive literature review to show the state of art uh, regarding one topic, and, and then I select without, for example, the the mechanism of uh, date range, okay? And then I'm offered with 1,000 papers, okay? Virtually impossible to write one research paper revealing 1,000 papers, okay? Very difficult inquire indeed, right? But let's say you narrow down the date range uh, for your database search for the last five years because you want to uh, offer the reader insights on new trends, Okay, in the community. And then maybe you might be offered with 30 papers, 20 papers, okay? We don't know. So a more reduced number. In this case, you write a comprehensive literature review in which you list, analyze, compare, and establish a dialogue between all of the papers you found on your database search, okay? This is called a comprehensive literature review. Okay, so that's the first distinction about types of literature review. Selective, when you decide which papers are the most relevant and which papers you're going to include in your literature review. And comprehensive, when you review all of the papers you found on your, liter your database search. Okay, it can also be standalone, when the whole text is a literature review, or part of a broader, when the literature review is a section of a text. Okay? If you're writing a selective literature review, right, 
you must pay attention to some questions when you're reading, okay? Because not all the information that you read are going to be present in your text, right? So usually we re read 10 papers, 20 papers, right? And include one or two if you're writing a selective literature review, okay? So some good tips for us to pay attention when you're reading, some things to bear in mind when you're reading, right? And try to identify the texts we're reading, okay? So trends and patterns. So always when you're reading, look, look for trends and patterns, okay? So in the last 10 years, a lot of researchers have been worried about understanding X, okay? Understanding blah, okay? So this is a trend, okay? Or every research in the last 10 years have used the methodological approach of da da da. This is a trend. This is a pattern, okay? What is repeated across studies, okay? That's one indication of importance. Other indication of importance is debates and conflicts, okay? So whenever there is a question with no agreement or little agreement, uh, this is something worth mentioning something worth, worth paying attention to, okay? So there's something that researchers don't agree on in the scientific community, right? And I might, also, I might want to address this question, okay? And tell where do I stand in this dialogue, in this question. Pivotal publications, okay? So publications that have been cited a lot, publications that have been considered a lot within the field, okay? And then you might check, for example, the... Citation index, okay, so how much this uh, paper has been cited, which indicates mm, uh, importance, okay, so it has been a very important role to the community because a lot of people read this text, a lot of people reviewed, a lot of people talked, participated in a dialogue with this text, okay. And finally, gaps, okay? So what has not been said, and I think that's the most difficult thing to read for, right? So to read for... Uh, the lack of information, to read what is not there, okay? So, understand what is there, what is being presented, and to think about what is missing. That's a gap, okay? So, just some ideas for us to pay attention when you're reading and uh, helping us select which kind of information I might want to include in, a, in my literature review. Okay? When it comes to textual organization, I'm going to hide my camera because I'm in front of the text. Okay, when it comes to textual organization, right? Uh, your literature review might uh, be organized in differ different situations, in different uh, organizations. The first one is what we call chronological, okay? So you have read, so you have read different studies, a plethora of studies, a plethora of papers, right? And you need to decide on a way of presenting them. Okay, so what is the best way? Where do I start? What is the first paper that I present? Okay, what is the starting point? One way to go about this is to uh, decide which was the older, okay, the older study, the one that was published first, and start from there, okay, and work your way up to recent studies. That's one possible organization, which is chronological, all right? So then I start from older and go to the recent. Another possibility is a thematic organization, okay? So organized around themes. Usually in this organi organization, we have lots of subtitles, okay? So I establish key concepts, core themes for my research, and then I go about them separately, okay? So let's say I'm researching education and inclusion, uh, and then I talk about, for example, access to school, right? So I talk about access to school in one, subtitle of my research, and then I talk about inclusion in the second subtitle of my research, subsection, and in the third subsection, I talk about education at all, okay? So it's another way of organizing your literature review around the themes, okay? Uh, you might also want to organize your literature review over methodological uh, approaches, okay? So you might want to compare different methods used across the studies. So then you talk about all of the researchers, uh, all of the studies that use me method A, and then the studies that use method B, and then studies that use method C, right? Uh, and then you might want to compare all of them, the implications of them, how they impacted in the body of knowledge itself, okay? And finally, theoretical, okay? When you're having uh, opposing theories or models, okay? So then I go about the first 
theory, the first model, and then afterwards I go to the second and then the third one if there is such. Okay? So four ways of organizing your literature review. Okay? Where do I start? Where do I go from? Chronological, organized based on time. Thematic, so I establish the themes and then I go about each one of them. Methodological, so I uh, establish with methods have been used by the researchers and then I go about each one of them. And theoretical, when I identify opposing theories or models within the fields of research and then I go about each one of them in detail. Okay? Very good. Any questions so far? Let me come back. Any questions so far? So our time is almost up. And I have a big summary for you. So I have this video that will summarize everything we have discussed. Okay? It's a short video. It's not, not a very long video. Uh, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to play the video to you. And I'm going to ask you to pay attention to what, uh, what new information can you acquire from the video, okay? Anything that you didn't understand, anything that, anything that you uh, wasn't clear in my explanation during the webinar, okay? So you might want to pay attention in those questions while we watch the video. So while I set things up, so while I open the, the video and get things work to be played, uh, tell me, do you have any questions? Anything is not clear? Anything you'd like to ask? Anything you'd like to comment on? How are you following? I'm going to... Just a second. Um, I thought it was open, but it's not. More advice. Great. Santinho, tranquilo, mas pode haver de a revisão da literatura envolver mais de uma das abordagens apontadas. É, quando você diz abordagens, você diz os modelos de organização textual, Santino? Tipo. Uma revisão de literatura pode ser organizada cronologicamente e tematicamente? Ou cronologicamente e metodologicamente? É isso? Ou você está falando dos modelos é, teóricos da última abordagem lá? Deixa eu voltar aqui no slide. Porque é, se você estiver falando dos modelos teóricos, eu diria que se a gente faz essa organização... É, isso não é uma possibilidade, isso é uma quase que uma regra. Né? Então, se eu escolho a o theoretical approach, né? se eu escolho organizar minha revisão de literatura com base em teorias e modelos opostos, eu preciso ter mais de uma teoria ou modelo né? para que eles se oponham. Uh, nesse caso. Agora, se você estiver falando sobre a possibilidade de utilizar, por exemplo, uma organização que seja cronológica e temática, sim, existe essa possibilidade, mas elas precisam estar hierarquizadas. Então, você precisa ter uma primeira organização. Então, por exemplo... É muito comum que, eu, que a cronológica seja a segunda, né? Então, por exemplo, eu posso ter uma organização que é temática em primeira instância, então eu organizo os trabalhos, separo os trabalhos de acordo com o tema que eles abordam, e aí dentro dos, de cada uma das sessões que vão abordar cada um dos temas separadamente, eu começo com os trabalhos que são mais antigos e trabalho, work my way up, né? E vou aí avançando até os trabalhos mais recentes, ok? Legal. Ótimo. Então, pessoal, ó, a gente vai assistir o vídeo. E o vídeo é um resumão de tudo que a gente discutiu, só para as coisas ficarem mais claras, tá? E aí vão pensando. Se tem alguma coisa que eu não entendi direito, alguma dúvida, é... algo que é novo para mim, não ficou claro. E aí a gente discute no final da aula. E aí depois do vídeo eu volto, é, respondo as dúvidas que vocês eventualmente tiverem, apresento a tarefa e aí a gente encerra a aula, ok? Então vamos lá. A literature review is an objective, concise, critical summary of published research literature relevant to a topic being researched in an article. A good literature review will order articles and books to focus on unresolved debates, inconsistencies, tensions, and questions in a research field. It will also summarize the most relevant important aspects of scientific literature related to your area of research. 
and synthesize past and current research on the topic and show how your research fits in. One way to think about doing a literature review is to imagine building a bookshelf. You don't need to cut each piece by yourself. Rather, you can take the pieces that other researchers have made and put them together to build your project. The literature review provides an understanding of the background of the field, identifying which studies are important and which are not, to put together your bookshelf of a study. So what should the literature review include? Historical background for research. You should show what has been written about your field of research so that you can present something new and significant and contribute to the understanding of this field, even in a small way. This also demonstrates to other researchers and journal editors that you know how to read theoretical concepts and put them in your own words to show understanding. Include current research context in which your research is situated. This means discussion questions, issues, and debates in the field. You can contextualize your work by showing related work as both historical background and the modern state of research, showing the development and trends of research. Include relevant theories and concepts. For example, if you are researching the relationship between the ecological environment and human population in that environment, providing models and theories that focus on specific aspects of this connection will help contextualize your study. Introduce and define relevant terminology to show how terms fit into the context of your work. Describe related research and show how your work expands or challenges this research, or works to fill in a gap in the work in this field. You can use the literature review as evidence of what works, what doesn't, and what is missing. Provide supporting evidence for a practical problem or issue that your research is addressing, showing its importance. Referencing related research establishes your area of research as reputable and shows you are building upon previous work that other researchers have deemed significant. Literature reviews range from the selective, a very narrow area of research or only a single work, to the comprehensive, or a larger amount or range of works. They can also exist as part of a larger work or stand on their own. A course assignment is an example of a selective standalone work. It focuses on a small segment of the literature on a topic and makes up an entire work on its own. The literature review in a dissertation or thesis is both comprehensive and helps make up a larger work. A majority of journal articles start with a selective literature review to provide context for research reported in the manuscript, which is the broader work for which the literature gives context. The literature review is often included in the introduction. Some literature reviews are both comprehensive and stand as a separate work. The entire article analyzes the literature on a given topic. Thus, the literature review, while it has common applications across many kinds of documents, can serve slightly different purposes and take different forms. The two types of literature reviews found in journals are research articles, such as studies and surveys, and standalone literature analyses. They differ in their scope, length, and specific purpose. The literature review found at the beginning of a journal article is used to introduce the research related to the specific study and is found in the introduction section, usually near the end. It is shorter than standalone reviews because it must limit its scope to very specific studies and theories that are directly relevant to this study. It is also often used to set research precedent and support theory or methods. Here is an example of a review of the literature, accompanied by the heading, Related Research. This section is four paragraphs in length and cites four to five sources, or roughly one source per short paragraph. This is fairly standard for a literature review introducing an article or study. When a literature review exists as a part of an introduction to a study, it follows the structure of the introduction itself and moves from the general to the specific, presenting the broadest background information about a topic first, and then moving to specific studies that support your study, finally leading to your hypothesis statement. The literature is often indistinguishable from the introduction itself, introducing the background and defining the gaps your study aims to fill. The standalone literature review published as its own article, on the other hand, presents and analyzes as much of the important text in an area of study as possible to provide background information and context for a current area of research or a specific study that is being conducted now or will be conducted in the future. This can be an excellent resource for researchers when they are first seeking out the most relevant information on an area of study. Such an article thus presents and analyzes as many relevant texts as necessary to give a full account of a research topic, approach, or theory. It is generally a bit broader in scope and extends further back in time. This means that sometimes a scientific literature review can be highly theoretical. In addition, it focuses on the results and methods of previous studies. It often has a more extended analysis and goes into greater detail. 
All of the sections of this kind of review refer to the literature rather than detailing a specific current study. In this example of a literature review in a journal, there are two features that distinguish it. First, the words literature review are contained in the title. While it is not necessary to include this exact term, many literature reviews do indicate the type of article in their title. The second feature one notices is the length of the text. It is much longer than the literature review that introduces a study. The headings indicate what kind of literature is being discussed and how it contributes to the topic. At the end of the review is a conclusion that once again explicitly ties all of these works together to show how this analysis is itself a contribution to the literature. So how do authors turn a network of articles into a coherent review of relevant literature? Writing the literature review is not usually a linear process. You will often need to go back and check the literature while reformulating your ideas. This means you will not be writing the literature review at any one time, but constantly working on it before, during, and after your study is complete. This process will apply more to standalone literature reviews, but can also be useful in understanding what to include to introduce your study. The first step is to choose a topic to write on, focus, and explore this topic. Choose a topic that you are familiar with and highly interested in analyzing, a topic your intended readers and researchers will find interesting and useful, and a topic that is current, well established in the field, and about which there has been sufficient research conducted for a review. This will help you find the sweet spot for what to focus on. In a journal article introduction, this is the point where you might realize you need to adjust your scope depending on what you learn from the literature. Next, research and collect all of the scholarly information on that topic that might be pertinent to your study. Scholarly articles, books, academic conference speeches, dissertations and theses, and any other academic work related to your area of study is called the literature. Next, analyze the network of information that extends or responds to the major works in your area. Select the material that is most useful. Use thought maps and charts to identify intersections in the research and to outline important categories. Select the material that will be most useful for you to review. Following this, it's time to describe and summarize each article. Provide the essential information of the article that pertains to your study. Determine two to three important concepts, depending on the length of your article, that are discussed in the literature. Take notes about all of the important aspects of the study relevant to your topic being reviewed. For example, in a study of heart disease, perhaps some of the main concepts are arthiosclerosis, hypertension, and obesity. Note these concepts and then write a brief summary about how the article incorporates them. For instance, Yang's 1995 longitudinal study of obese patients attempts to measure the effects of chronic hypertension on atherosclerosis. In reviews that introduce a study, these can be relatively short summaries. In standalone reviews, there may be significantly more text and concepts to review. After you've summarized each article, you want to demonstrate how these concepts in the literature relate to what you discovered in your study or how the literature connects the concepts or topics being discussed. In a literature intro for the article, this information might include a summary of the results or methods of previous studies that correspond or confirm to the sections in your own study. You might identify the missing parts in previous studies that your study addresses, or highlight concepts that support your hypothesis, methods, results, or conclusions. In a standalone literature review, this may mean highlighting the concepts in each article and showing they strengthen a hypothesis or show a pattern. For example, you might identify any unaddressed issues in the previous studies. You can identify what is accurate and what is out of scope within these works. The final step in the literature review process is to identify relationships in the literature and develop and connect your own ideas to them. This is essentially the same as the previous step, but focus on the connections between the literature and the current study or guiding concepts or arguments in the paper, not only the connections between the works themselves. Examining these concepts is almost like doing a study in itself, pointing to the most important information from previous studies and drawing possible conclusions from the results of these works. Your hypothesis, argument, or guiding concept is the golden thread that will ultimately tie the works together and give them the importance they wouldn't have had outside of your literature review. Furthermore, your review will not only cover publications on your topics, but will include your own ideas and contributions. By following these steps, you will be telling the specific story that sets the background and shows the significance of your research, and you can turn a network of related works into a focused review of the literature. How long should a literature review be? The length of your literature review will be determined by how many sources you are reviewing and how many concepts you are exploring, as well as how much tension exists between these concepts. A standalone literature review can be anywhere from two to three pages to an entire book in length. 
For a separate article, this section is usually no more than two to four paragraphs maximum. How many sources should I review? The amount of articles you review will be heavily determined by how broad or narrow your topic is, how in-depth you want to explore an issue, and perhaps how much consensus or disagreement exists in this area. In a standalone review, the number of works reviewed might be anywhere from 5 to 15, and up to 30 or more in a full book of literature review. Whereas a journal article usually has fewer than 5 sources and does not go into great depth, but often focuses on the most important points. Here are some tips for creating a stronger literature review. Always define your topic and audience before beginning your research. This will help later when deciding which works to ultimately include in the review. Read as many journal articles as you can, especially those that are in your area of interest. These will give you an excellent idea of how to structure and order your review. Focus on more current literature, especially when it comes to studies and articles. Using older theories is fine if they are fundamental and provide a stable foundation for work that hasn't changed over the years. But more current research will always be highly sought after by researchers and other readers. This might go without saying, but researchers should always take ample notes while they are researching the texts. Using note cards, tables, and computing programs like Microsoft Excel will help organize and index information and make it much easier to categorize later. Whatever you do, don't simply stack text in the relevant pile without first writing down exactly what in the text makes them relevant. For more resources on research writing and publication information, as well as a full list of academic editing services, Okay, so a very thorough summary of everything we've discussed, right? Uh, I think we, we cover pretty much um, most of the characteristics of a literature review. There's also a lot to be said when it comes to language, right? And that's what, it, what, was, what we're going to be exploring in the next few classes, okay? So tell me, did you like the video? Any questions so far? Any new piece of information? I think that the, the last thing the guy said is very important uh, when it comes to the reading process, right? So always, this idea of always um, keeping track of a reading process, right? Everything that you read, even if at that given point, you think it's not relevant to your research, uh, this might change over time, right? So in the future, uh, you might rethink what you read uh, upon new light, upon new data, new information. Uh, and then you think that's that given article that, that you've read in the past that you deem that's irrelevant at that point is now actually very relevant for your research. So a way of saving your time and being more effective when you go about your reading process is to, keep in, is to keep track of it so that you can consult your file, right, rather than the whole text. Again, so tell me any questions. How was it while I explain the practice activity for this week, okay? It's going to be very simple, very easy. Okay, so this is the homework for this week, okay? What are you going to do this week for me? You're going to read a text, okay, again. So you're going to select one article that is relevant for a topic of research. You're going to choose them. Uh, it can be the same article that you've reviewed in the past if, right, uh, this article is a literature review. Right? Because in the past, you've reviewed, you analyzed the introduction. Right? So if the introduction the literature review refers to the same part, you're going to be analyzing the same thing again. Okay, uh, okay so what I want you to know, what, what I want you to do, I want you to select one article, one research paper that is relevant to your research, to your paper, okay? And I want you to analyze the literature review section, okay? And then... It can be the whole paper, if the whole paper is a literature review, or the section of a literature review if the paper is not a literature review paper, okay? What are you going to look for, okay? I want you to tell me, which approach did the author use to organize their literature review, okay? So, is it organized chronologically, 
theoretically, methodologically, or thematically, right? And do you think it's a good choice? Do you think it offers an overview of the state of art in the field? Why or why not? What, what would you do differently, okay? You might also want to point out what is the type of text that is being analyzed. Is it a standalone literature review? Is it part of the broader text literature review? Is it, is it a selective literature review? Is it a comprehensive literature review, okay? Uh, what are the characteristics? And then uh, some literature review functions that we've discussed for you to identify in this text. Okay, so you're going to tell me the text that you've read. Uh, is it is it the literature review section placing each work in the context of its contribution to understand the research problem being studied? Okay, so are those functions are those literature review functions being performed by the text? Okay, if you answer yes to any one of them. To some of them, at least, you're going to, hopefully, right? I want you to provide evidence. What is evidence? Evidence is a citation, okay? So if you think the author plays each work in the context of its contribution, you either explain how he did so, or you go to the text, copy the parts of the text in which he does so, and then you put them in the, the file you're going to send me. Always, if you do so, right? If you're copying the text, exact same words, always using quotation marks to indicate that those words are not yours, okay? So this is the homework. Erika, sim, é para escolher um artigo de revisão ou artigo que tem uma revisão de literatura, tá? Idealmente, é arriscado falar que todos têm, né? Porque... Todos é muito trabalho, né? Mas, idealmente, todos os trabalhos teriam, pelo menos, uma sessão de revisão de literatura, tá? O que eu quis dizer é que, se vocês optarem por um, por um trabalho que a revisão de literatura é a mesma sessão da introdução, e aí eu quero que vocês escolham um trabalho diferente daqueles que vocês fizeram semana passada, tá? Porque, senão, vocês vão estar analisando o mesmo texto e é trabalho repetido, coisa que vocês já fizeram, tá? Agora, se vocês, na semana passada, quando vocês estavam... Passada não, semana retrasada, né? Quando vocês fizeram aquela atividade que vocês leram um trabalho e analisaram a introdução do trabalho, se esse trabalho que vocês escolheram lá naquele momento for um trabalho de revisão de literatura, aí vocês podem usar o mesmo texto, tá? Porque aí, nesse caso, vocês não vão estar analisando a mesma sessão do texto, tá? Vocês vão estar analisando coisas diferentes e aí não é trabalho repetido. Então, existe essa possibilidade, ok? Eu quero, é, de novo, sem jogar água para fora da bacia, eu quero que vocês estejam trabalhando com textos que sejam relevantes para vocês, tá? Então, que vocês possam utilizar essa análise, essas informações, tanto para pensar, refletir sobre essas questões de organização textual, tá? Quando vocês forem é, construir o texto de vocês, quanto é, estudar para a pesquisa de vocês. Então, vocês, em algum momento, vocês teriam que ler é, trabalhos sobre o tema de vocês e que, que isso funcione também para... É, o desenvolvimento das habilidades textuais e a construção do texto, ok? Ficou claro, pessoal? Alguma dúvida sobre a tarefa, sobre os conteúdos que a gente discutiu, a revisão de literatura, sobre o vídeo? Alguma coisa não ficou claro? Algum comentário? É, como eu digo toda semana, se não surgir dúvida agora, mas quando vocês estiverem fazendo atividade e a dúvida surgir, é, entrem em contato comigo, é, eu tô tentando dar conta de responder todo mundo, nem sempre eu tenho conseguido, peço desculpas, tá? É, por não ter conseguido responder todo mundo a tempo, mas entre em contato comigo que aí assim que eu tiver um tempinho, assim que eu conseguir dar conta disso, eu é, tento ajudar vocês, ok? Nenhuma dúvida? Entendido, 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 <risos> entendido. Eu adoro que... Tendências, né? Que todos usam o mesmo termo. <risos> ah, análises linguísticas, desculpa. Às vezes eu piro na análise linguística das coisas. É... <risos> Pessoal, então, se não tem nem mais nenhuma dúvida, se todo mundo entendeu, espero que as informações que nós discutimos hoje é, tenham sido úteis para vocês, que vocês possam pensar um pouquinho mais sobre essa sessão de revisão de literatura, a função dela, como que ela pode ser organizada, e as possibilidades na construção do nosso texto para que a gente possa comunicar é, esse conhecimento que a gente está desenvolvendo da melhor maneira, né, para que ele alcance mais pessoas, que mais pessoas entendam e participem dessa, é, dessa conversa. Então, espero que tenha sido útil. Por hoje é só. Agradeço a presença de todos, peço desculpas pelos, é, pelo problema técnico lá no começo da, do webinar, 
é, fui pego de surpresa e aí a gente está aprendendo né, nessa situação louca aí, a gente está aprendendo a lidar com essas demandas conforme elas aparecem, então peço desculpas pelos problemas, pelo problema técnico e é isso, muito obrigado por terem vindo, muito obrigado por terem participado acompanhado, eu sei que é muita informação né? é, revisão de literatura é uma sessão pesada, densa, né? com muitas coisas a serem discutidas, mas agradeço por vocês terem participado, conversado comigo, interagido é, tenham uma boa semana e até semana que vem, então. Tchau, tchau, pessoal.